Hey guys, Matthew here. So today we'll talk about UberLab. The good, the bad, the build I used, the why, the how, the math behind it, and everything else. So, I'll try to make this a little bit of a quicker video because from watching my YouTube analytics, it seems people have pretty short attention spans. They'll just click on, watch for a few minutes, and then simply X out uh, because the video is too long. So while I know some of you like the more in-depth, longer videos, uh, just feel free to ask questions in the comments if you have anything that you'd like to know more about, and I'll be trying uh, to answer uh, every single one. So UberLab, when should you get into UberLab? So basically, you know, as I said, this series is going to be about the top, you know, best ways to make currency in the first week of a league. Not in the, not in the league, not in Path of Exile, in the first week of a league. This is going to be about UberLab, and I believe personally that UberLab is as profitable as it can be within the first one to four days of a league-ish. Uh, this can be, you know, pushed back to, you know, five days or even the first week. Uh, but for me, typically, after the first four days, I'll switch over to something different uh, because starting around day four or five, trading and crafting become more profitable than, than you know running lab. So long as the supply is available, so I'll just go do that instead. But if the supply wasn't there, for example, I could and would keep farming lab up to like the first week. Uh, the first week mark when at that point, it's 100% sure that, you know, Running, running lab is no longer number one. So when do you start running lab? If possible, day one would be the best, but at worst, uh, day two. Uh, you really don't want to be, you know, starting to run lab after that. So if you, if it's possible for you, so like if you can push and get to the whatever level you need or you requires. For example, for me, it was level 86. At level 86, I was capable of starting to farm Uber Lab. Uh, so I pushed to 86. And then around day two, I started uh, farming lab in Legion. It would be even better if you could on day one, but that's starting to be, you know, to ask a lot to get to, you know, 85, 86 on the first day, especially if, if you're not like a super good racer or anything. It's definitely a good, a, a pretty big challenge. So how are you actually going to do that? You're going to be, you're going to get your, your uh, trials. You can get all of them within eight to 12 hours of a league uh, from just global 820 and trade 820 if you have to pay for them a couple chaos one two chaos for the trials just pay for it it's actually worth it for sure so why why uber lab well the money is actually pretty insane especially if twice if you have access to twice enchanted prophecies uh at sub four chaos each so anything under four chaos or four chaos even uh would be considered a good price but remember that this is in the first four days of a league obviously as the league goes on twice enchanted prophecies become more expensive it doesn't mean they're no longer worth using i'm just saying in the first four days i would pay you know, all the way up to four chaos each for twice enchanted, because I know for a fact that it would still be very, very profitable to use them, even if it, if if they were four chaos each. So if 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 you can, do not run lab without them. That being said, if you're wasting more time than you could be, you know, running more lab by trying to get them. So for example, if you're running lab in three minutes on a given day and it's taking you more than like two minutes to actually buy one because the API is broken or maybe they're all they're always already sold and stuff, then just keep running lab instead. Uh, because you're you're just wasting currency. If you're not doing anything, you're basically losing money. So a tip, you can set up a whoop to buy them. So like a live search. So whenever someone pops one up for whatever price, you can just go ahead and buy it. You can also use POE app to buy them in bulk, or you could also have a, tri a trader buy them for you uh, and sell them to you in bulk, obviously for a premium price. But as I said, all the way up to four chaos each, it's fine. So if your if your trader is getting them for one chaos each, and he's getting you know 10, 15 of them, and you're buying them from him for 1.5, two chaos each, it's still a very good bar uh, like a, a very good bargain. Yet he is also making currency off of it, so it's good for everybody. So where do you make currency in lab? Obviously you make currency from the chests. That's a given. Uh, a three to four key run, if you're you know speed running and you're only doing what's on the main path. So let's say you have maybe a dark shrine and like a uh, like a puzzle or something. You you end up with about three four key pretty much every run. Obviously if you're going straight to zero, it's going to be about two key runs average per 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 lab. But you can easily do three four if you just do what's on the main path, and it doesn't take that much time wasted. And sometimes you'll even get like portal to zero on like a, 
uh, Dark Shrine, so it's actually going to end up being, you know, less time wasted than if you didn't do it. Either way, so that's going to net you a, f a few chaos, uh, you know, chaos per run on average. It's it should be enough to pay for your offering and your twice enchanted at any time in the league when you're running lab. Just the keys, the 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 four, the three four chests should net you enough currency to pay for your offering and your twice enchanted. And obviously, you have the possibility of dropping like GG really nice things. For example, this league I dropped the combs in lab. Uh, I was dropping a uh, ton, ton of really meta gems. So for example, uh, in the second day of the league, if, of this league, for example, for example, Legion, if you were to drop like a 16% a quality Cyclone and just put 20% quality on it uh, with four GCPs, you could have sold that for like 50 chaos uh, just because it was super meta. So that's one thing. Whenever you're getting gems of over 16% quality, if they are meta, always, always GCP them up to 20% quality when you're trying to sell them. Because it's going to make it a lot more likely for you to sell. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot more likely for you to sell it. Then, another thing. Enchants. Obviously, enchants... Um, in the first four days of the league, I would not enchant boots or gloves. Obviously, I would only enchant helmets. Uh only helmets so if i did a, a 10 thousand ish uber lab test and that was in standard by the way pre-league uh and it's it's not like super f factual science whatever it's more like uh anecdotal how i felt about it and how i feel about it and from doing it in legion once again how i feel about it but i came to the conclusion that every time you use the enchanting device on a helmet in the first four days of league you will be rewarded with about 25 chaos. Does that mean? Does that mean that literally every enchant sells for at least 25 chaos? Of course not. Some of them are completely worthless. But 90% of the enchants that you get in the first couple days of a league, or here first four days of a league, they will sell if they're on any item level 84 plus tier one bases. So what I mean by that is like royal burgundies, eternal burgundies, uh, lion pelts, huber circlets all these really really good bases if they're item level 84 plus which means they can roll the highest possible um, resistance roll they will sell between 20 and 40 chaos even if those are really really non meta skills so long as actually somebody out there is using it and you also have the jackpot enchants that result in numerous exalts that make up for the actual trash enchants so for example to give you a, a rough example this league in legion when i was running uber lab i was enchanting just any tier one bases of item level 84 plus mostly strength bases because i knew you know it's a melee meta but i was also enchanting a non-strength bases whenever i ran out of strength bases because you will run out uh, especially that early like on the second day of the league there's not thousands and thousands of item level 84 plus tier one bases but there's still a lot of them and i was selling like, shattering the steel ice spear toxic rain herald of agony uh you know minus matter redu uh, reduced mana on certain things like determination whatever like i was selling tons and tons and tons and tons of like off meta if you want to call them that off meta enchants uh just because the people who are playing these off meta builds once they have the currency to get the enchant that they want they're just going to go ahead and buy it if you're if you're the only person offering that supplying those they're going to buy it from you and if you're doing that in the first few days of a league you're going to have tons and tons and what i mean tons i'm talking like I had a buddy actually buying the, the bases for me because I was running a uh, lab like consistently and I wanted to have, have as least possible downtime and he had to buy me just he had to go back and buy me helmets and go back to buy me helmets and go back to buy me helmets because I was just enchanting like things like crazy and all of them were selling literally everything was selling at this point from the hundreds of enchant uh, of helmets that I had in Legion League I think I have three that weren't sold and I actually got PMs for some of them, even this late into the league, like last week and a few days ago. Um, but I just wasn't there to respond. So it's like, even at this point, they'd still sell for, for like 20, 40 chaos, uh, which isn't great, obviously, at this point anymore. But in the first four days, if an exalt is like 50, 60 chaos, every three enchants worth in between, you know, 20, or even two enchants from worth anything from 20 to 40 chaos which would mean like 30 chaos average each two enchants is an exalt so 
it becomes pretty clear how much currency you can actually literally be printing by farming Uber Lab from only Helmet and Chance. But remember, this is in the first four days of a league. This is the very important part that you need to remember. This is the first four days, and you can extend that to like a week. But this is the first few days of a league, the first week of a league. Don't expect these kind of results if you're like three weeks into a league. It's a very different story. This is about the first few days. This is really important. Also, you can you also have the uh, the um, possibility of doing full key runs. You know, getting six to eight keys uh, by doing the entire labyrinth. Uh, but I have an issue with that, and it's simply the math behind it, right? So what's cool is that you get to open all the chests or almost all the chests and get a bunch of loose explosions, and it's cool and it's nice. What's not so fun is when you actually do the math on it. So. This was actually a little bit too aggressive. Um, let's just use some maybe more realistic figures instead of using these figures that may be a little bit too aggressive. Okay, so by doing a full key on, on like a Leap Slam Juggernaut, for example, let's say doing the full thing, the six to eight key runs by doing all the boss phases and letting Izaro do his little things when it's the charge ups or the whatever it is, right? Let's say it takes you 12 minutes. I started with 15. Let's be less aggressive here. Let's say 12 minutes. And for the same for the same day in a lab, the speed lab runner going at like 500, 600% moving speed. Uh, once again, I was maybe a bit too aggr aggressive. Uh, let's say he takes four minutes instead of three that I had put initially. All things equal, this was five times, but we're going less aggressive here. We're going to say three times, right? So... This guy takes 12 minutes to do his full, full, full key runs. And if you look at full key runs on YouTube runs, uh, for the most part, people are taking about 10, 12 minutes. And, and, and lab runners that are doing speed are taking 3, 4 minutes. So these are, these actually are all numbers that make sense. So the speed lab runner gets to run 3 labs by the time the, you know, the full key lab runner has run 1. So that means 3 times more in chance. You know, three times more and chance, obviously, because you're running three instead of one. But also, you have to consider your keys. If you're running three times more labs, and you're getting, let's say, three keys per run, which is from doing, let's say, one is our mechanic, which requires you to kill him quickly, which, for the most part, every single lab is going to have one mechanic that is going to be like, kill Zara quickly. So you're getting nine keys. You're getting nine keys if you're doing, you know, three minutes per run, three keys per run. You're getting nine keys in 12 minutes. The other person who's doing full key runs in his own 12 minutes got six to eight keys. So you're actually getting to open more chests by simply going faster. Even if you're only opening a few chests every time, you're still actually opening more chests. Or at the very least, the same amount. So this is where, you know, I personally don't like full key runs. I think the only place full key runs have an actual place to be is in hardcore. If you're playing hardcore, if you want to be super safe, play something like a Juggernaut, right, that can't die to his arrow, can't die to Argus, can't die to a DC, can't die to traps, can't die, period, um, then it makes sense to do full key runs because you don't have to be that fast uh, and you don't, you know, it's, it's a much different economy in hardcore. So, comes down to my recommendation, I say don't do full key runs unless you can do them in twice the amount of time it takes for a speed lab runner. So, if the speed lab runner on any given day takes four minutes, if you take any more than eight minutes, you're doing it wrong. And I'm not saying you're actually doing it wrong, I'm saying like doing full key runs is bad on that given day. If it takes you seven minutes and it takes the speed lab runner four, then it's perfectly fine to do full key runs because if you end up doing the math, you're going to get more keys. You're not going to get as many enchants, but at least you're going to get as many or more keys. So at least you're not losing anything by doing full key runs. I still don't think you should do full key runs. I still think and advocate anybody should just do speed lab running, but obviously that requires a lot more, you know, uh, 
I don't want to say cognitive ability. You don't have to be smart to do it, but you're actually going to have to focus on what you're doing. And you're not going to be able to go brain dead mode while watching a movie and just leap slamming through traps and never dying. You actually have to think about what you're doing. And, uh, you know, simply running in, into a wall and, and hitting a trap could get you killed if you're not paying attention. Um, and his arrow mechanic coming your way because for some reason you actually didn't skip his phase gets you killed it's all these things that you actually have to consider um which require you to think a lot more it's, i'm not saying it's hard or anything i'm just saying you have to actually actively think about what you're doing which can be a little bit less you know fun to some extent but it's more interactive so there's that at least a little bit more immersive Anyways, so I was going to show you guys in-game what it looks like, but the things I kind of valued most of the items and double corrupted them, so I don't really have a, a, a speed lab runner anymore. I do have one in standard, but he's not specced in, and he's missing a few pieces that I sold, so I can't really do that. But I'll show you the POB, and I'll be linking that in the description as well. So this is basically the most budget POB I could com come up with uh, to start lab running at level 86. Um... So, what you do if you're higher than level 86 is simply simply go up here uh, and pick up the Unnatural Instinct Jewel Socket because you do get the 9% moon speed and you do get some spell damage and a little bit of int. And the build is quite int starved. Uh, but otherwise though, it's uh, if you wanted to go as fast as possible, like I did it at level 86, I started lab running, I just didn't have the Unnatural Instinct stuff. So long as you have 29,000 or around 29,000 you will be able to skip his arrow phases. And what I mean by that is basically you're able to kill his arrow before he comes out of his platform and he goes right back into his platform and you skip the entire mechanic of him having to fight you. And that is extremely, extremely important when it comes to speed lab running. You're gaining almost a minute every run by simply doing that. It's about it's actually more like forty seconds, but like forty seconds less time to do every single run because you're skipping the phases and if you're wondering what that looks like I actually have a video that I'll be linking in the description that I made a few months ago uh, when I was lab running in standard and you'll be able to see what that is and that was also like a very budget build like nothing crazy on it all you're getting and this is the updated tree by the way all you're going for is basically the most possible movement speed as you can get and the most my or trap damage or mine damage but in this example it's traps most trap damage you can get the playstyle is willy wonky if you've never done it you're probably going to die at least five to ten lab runs uh you know before you start to get it because it is pretty wonky and uh, you you know you have the chest swap uh weapon swap uh you know swap all your uh all your uh your auras like super fast it, it's it's very different from let's say a juggernaut with like 10 endurance charges that cannot die but it's also faster and more rewarding once you get it right so it's it's finding that you know equilibrium of what you rather personally i'd rather do this because it nets me a lot more currency but it's not safe i wouldn't do this in hardcore at all anyway so the items um this was like as budget as it could be you know have a few hair triggers a few long winters uh a jewel for resistances because your resistance starve when you're getting like the least possible like the the cheapest gear on earth essentially is what this build is uh you know just a crappy belt with a bit of strength uh crappy ring with just resistances a uh, ming's heart actually gives you a ton of damage uh so if you're ever lacking damage on a physical build dude just slap on a ming's heart and your damage goes through the roof uh so that's that as you can see, this is equipped with a plus one level of socketed gems tabula. And this is actually necessary. This is the only, if you want to say it, expensive part of the build. Um, is either a plus one level of socketed uh, tabula or a plus two AoE gems tabula. Because as I said, the threshold is about 29,000 damage. If you're using a regular tabula, or for example, here a six link, you only have 25,000. So you're not actually going to skip the phases every time. Especially on days where Izara was buffed with more elemental resistances. So that's a no bueno. This is going to be fixed with time as you can acquire you know, quality on your gems. That's going to help you a lot. And if you if you can just get yourself a level 20 or 21 Glacial Cascade, then it's no longer an issue either way. But a simple level 20 Glacial Cascades with actual quality on your, you know, damage gems will also be enough. Uh, you can also get much better weapons than Divinarius's. 
Uh, you can get some uh, some rare weapons with like physical is extra cold, physical is extra lightning, physical is extra fire, whatever. All that damage with like non chaos is extra chaos and spell damage hybrid rolls, stuff like that. That will be like way 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 more damage than Divinarius's. But this was this is basically the POB as like literally as beginner friendly as it gets in terms of like. As cheap as it gets, I guess is what I, I want to say. As cheap as it gets and as simple as it gets, because it's mostly all uniques, as you can see. We're literally having to use a, uh, a resistance jewel to, to cap our resistances, because otherwise we're uncapped. So, yeah. So, I'm going to be leaving that in the description with the alongside the video that I told you guys about that I made uh, like a few months ago. With uh, basically what it looks like to skip the phases and all that stuff. Um, so that's basically it for lab running. I personally think if you're looking to make a lot of currency, make us like this league right now. Start practicing because, as I said, this this does take time to get actually good at and used to because it's a very clunky clunky uh, playstyle, but it works and it works well and it it can literally make you a ton of currency early. Um, so, you know, start practicing, go in standard or whatever, make like a... This, this, these are items that will cost you, you know, almost nothing, by the way. Like this entire build, you, without the unnatural instinct especially, you can probably make for like one exalt in standard. So it's like dirt cheap items. Uh, so, you know, just go ahead and do it, get used to it, and see how it feels. And you'll you'll be pretty amazed by how, how well it actually does uh, once you've you know put in a little bit of time to get used to it um, so that's pretty much all I had to say about lab running once again recommendations only do speed lab running unless you're in hardcore or you're you know full key run boys actually insanely fast for some odd reason and um, don't pay too much for your twice enchanted but also don't run lab without twice enchanted for the first few days of the league uh, because they're so cheap and yet enchants are worth like almost any enchant is worth a lot well a lot not really but is sellable which is really really nice so until the next one this is going to be matthew signing out hopefully you enjoyed hope you learned a little something um quick thank you to uh, my two patreons at this point alex and jose you guys are awesome fucking love you and uh i'll catch you guys in the next one peace